All right, let's all get her in this morning. Standing scene page number 84. Number 84. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold, but in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one that silver Over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow, and someday yonder we will never move under the walk on streets that are pure as gold. Wonderful meeting this week. Absolutely. Wonderful preaching, wonderful singing. Amen. All right. This Friday, this coming Friday night, we're going to have caroling. We'll be leaving the church at six thirty. So make plans to be here for that. And bring finger food for afterwards. Go sing a while and eat a while. All right. And then on January the 3rd, we're going to have Brother Stacy Piercy with us. He'll be here for both services. All right. Morning and evening. All right. So make plans to be here for that. All right. 
No birthdays this week? No. Nothing. All right. <laughs> yes, Lord. All right, I believe the clans are going to come sing for us at this time. All right, we've got some we've got some leftovers from uh, Nikki and, and Anita's bakery up there. There's some cupcakes. There's some cake. There's a whole sweet potato pie. A whole pumpkin pie. They're back. Are they in the refrigerator or on the tables? They're on the tables. All we're asking is to give a donation for those. They didn't sell a whole lot yesterday at the uh, bakery. So if you want one, just make a good donation. Make sure Angela knows it's for Nikki. And uh, you can get it directly to her. Just go back there and look at them if you want them. If you will, please make a donation. And uh, be a little bit of a help there to them. Chad's going to be out of work a few weeks. And uh, till everything, till the money comes back in, they're going to need some help. So much prayer for them. Amen? Amen. All right. Listen to the Clintons as they sing. Well, I don't know if Chad and Nikki and um, Miss Anita are listening this morning and generally I do this song for Nikki but this morning I'm doing it for Chad um, I don't know how many of you weren't here for the service but it really seemed like from Iredell the Baptist he got a lung healing <laughs> and um, yes, only God could do that Amen Amen the stories how I made it through <laughs> when life is full of trouble pain and fear the answer may sound simple though everything else crumbles one thing has remained through all the years I still serve an amazing God. He's been with me every round. My weary feet have trod. He still cares. He still heals. He still met me broken hearts and dry. troubled seas the one who fed the thousands whose words could calm the tempest he's my bread of life and he's my peace I still serve an amazing Amen. God he's been with Every mile, my weary feet have trod. He still cares. He still feels. He still mending broken hearts and drying tears. 
this old world is bound to change. But I'm glad I know the one who always stays the same. And my song will ever be amazing God, you're still Amazing me, I still serve an amazing God. He's been with me every mile, my weary feet have trod. He still cares, he still heals, he still makes broken hearts and drying tears this old world is bound to change but I'm glad I know the one who always stays the same and my soul Last year, we've lost a lot of people, friends from the church, outside friends, family members. And when I think about this song, Scott just had a friend who um, just passed unexpectedly this past Monday, Sunday, whatever afternoon it was. And he had, back in 2012, 2013, had had a really bad stroke that they didn't think that he was going to come back from but he did and um, he had always had trouble walking ever since and and I think about your mom too Miss Ethelene she always had trouble walking she always had to have a walker but um once they closed their eyes and opened over here they didn't have to have that walker no more Amen. so um this is just in dedication to her and and Greg There's a window into heaven I can close my eyes and see Where there are no earthly struggles and the soul there is set free Where the deaf and dumb are shouting Cause the blind can finally see And those crippled legs are dancing Out across the crystal sea there's a special place in heaven Where the unborn babies play And they're rocked in the arms by mothers Whose chants have slipped away And all the unwanted children you say, my daddy, he's the king. And their smiles upon their faces as they spin around and sing. Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? The Son of God is reigning 
and the tears are finally gone. Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always on. The price of heaven is expensive But don't you worry about the cost It was paid in full by Jesus When he hung upon the cross And all the things that he promised We'll be there just like he said As an eternal reminder Of the precious blood he shed Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Where the sun There is overtaken by the light that's always on. Darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always on. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen, sister. Amen. It's going to be different. We know that. But uh, we've heard this week in the preaching that it'll be all right. Some tremendous messages. I think most of y'all was able to be here. If you wasn't, you missed it. For those of you that were only able to dial in through the Internet, you got just a little piece of it because it ain't the same. Uh you can enjoy it, and God can speak to your heart in, in the World Wide Web, I understand, but there's a difference in being here and experiencing the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost as he walks and works around in your heart. It's just it's a different, different work that God does, and I'm thankful for his work and for the great meeting. Uh, God blessed us, and uh, we had great, a great meeting, great turnout. Um, in the working of God, so we're re really, really pleased with that. Two great men, uh, two of the greatest preachers in the land these days. Um, they humble, they love God, and they love helping people, and that was very obvious in their in their preaching. 
and their willingness to come and to be with us. Good to see Brother Jack with us this morning. Remember to pray for him in uh, these shots that he's had to endure. And hopefully it's going to make things better for his knees to where he can get around a little better and then continue to pray for his dear wife, Miss Carol, and their son, Corey. And uh, Miss, Miss Kay uh, received a call. Did I say Carol? Did, I'm sorry. I apologize. Why did I say Carol? I thought I said Gail. Carol. I do apologize for the error there. I made a boo-boo. Mark that down. See, I almost made it through the year. Ain't that awful? To go this far in the year and finally make a boo-boo. That's awful. What shall I do? Miss Gail, pray for Miss Gail. Carol, Carol must need prayer too. I don't know. But pray for Miss Gail, Corey, and Brother Jack, the Leard crowd. <clears throat> Amen. Then remember Miss Carol. She needs prayer too as well. Amen. Uh, she has a friend that's about, well, anyway, we'll stay straight today. We'll be good. We'll be we'll be nice. We'll not cut up too much. But do remember many folks that's got serious needs that's going through things. Uh, as I was going to say before I messed up, uh, Miss Kay spoke with uh, Bob Davison this week, and uh, he can't get out and about right now, so pray for him. And uh, he misses us. I haven't had success in catching him, but maybe I can now. He said for us to come by and visit, so hopefully we can, we can visit with him, try to do a, a pretty afternoon where porch day's uh, in, and I'll try to go by and visit with him a little bit. So remember uh, him, pray for him, his family, all that they're going through. Pray about the days, Lord, to do what he wants to do in our hearts. Amen. Go to the book of Romans chapter number 6 with me this morning. Unusual text for the message that I'll be delivering. Last week we preached about the gift for God, how that the wise men, the kings as they're noted as, they call them kings, that's a label that's been attached to them, but those wise men that came from the east, how that they brought specific gifts to Jesus. And we talked about that a little bit last week, but got a little different look this morning. Uh, Romans chapter number 6 and verse number 14. Romans six fourteen. For sin shall not have dominion over ye, for, for ye, over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye yield your members, servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But, being now, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Our gracious fathers, we bow before you again this morning. We thank you for the privilege to come to the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our hearts this past week. And, Lord, it was great help to our souls. And we praise you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for the dedication and the obedience of the men of God. And, Lord, for the singers and obeying you in the songs. 
Lord, we had such a great meeting, and I praise your sweet holy name. But I pray this morning you'd help us afresh and anew, Lord, that you'd give me the anointing from on high that I must have in order to be helpful to your people. Forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Help us, Lord, to worship you as we've entered into thy gates, Lord, into thy courts this morning. May we praise thee, and we'll give you glory and praise. We pray, Father, for those that are lost, whether they be here in the midst of us this morning, whether they be watching through the web, I pray that God in heaven, you'd please help us, you'd help us to do that what's your will. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, I've got a little gift box here this morning, and uh, a lot of folks might be interested in the gift there, but you're not getting it. It doesn't have any specific person's name on there. So it's not for any particular individual. That might mean that it's for whosoever will. You know, that's sort of what Jesus did. He sort of placed a box out there and said, whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life freely. In Romans chapter number 6, we've, we've used the, word, the verse 23 very much in what we call the Romans road, which is a, a road to travel to help a sinner realize they're a rotten sinner on their way to a devil's hell. But God, who is rich in mercy and full of grace, sent his son Jesus to die that through Jesus Christ we can have eternal life, which is the gift of God. And I want to talk to us a little bit this morning about the gift. Now, you remember sitting around the tree, and I don't know how y'all do it, but I know how we've done it over at Mama's. We'd all gather around the tree, and, and Franklin would usually get over there. Uh, Frank get over there, and he'd be the one handing out presents. And everybody would be sitting there with them big eyes. I mean, you know, they're looking to see, is he fixing to hand me one? And usually you try to do with the younger folks and give the kids something to uh, keep them at peace because they get a little crazy, if you will. Everybody's looking and wondering what in the world is in that box. What is that gift that I'm about to receive? Well, I know y'all probably not guilty of this, but I was that little feller that usually tried to get a sneak peek. I've even unwrapped them and rewrapped them to see what was in there. And for you moms that use newspaper, shame on you. That stuff rips so bad, there's no way to rewrap it right. You ought to be ashamed of yourself to do that to a poor youngin. Get that good heavy-duty thick stuff so that when they pull it apart, they can put it back together without making any extra tears in there. Mama got so fed up with it that she just left mine in the trunk of the car. She had one of them big old Dodge Brown, whatever that thing was. I don't even remember now what you called that big old long thing. And it had a trunk that you could sleep a half a dozen folks in. And that's where she kept my gifts. And I was hoping that at some time she'd forget and leave her keys laying around. See, she worked third shift, and when, when third shift people go sleep, up to about dinner time, they sleep. I mean, you can tear the house down, slam doors, cut your head off with a chainsaw, whatever you want to do, they're asleep. And I was hoping I'd get a chance to get out there and see what was in there because, you know, just not knowing exactly what was in there just absolutely drive me crazy. Now, y'all know that I'm not the most patient fella in the world. So I just couldn't hardly stand it. Now, Daddy was better than that. Might be why I was a little more of Daddy's boy, a little favorite. See, Daddy got me a bicycle for Christmas one year, and he just put it in the house. How do you wrap a bicycle? Y'all hear me? <laughs> I mean, it was one of them big yellow swing bicycles with a five-speed stick right here. It was the baddest bike on the block. You hear me? I loved it. I thought, But I didn't have to wait to unwrap that one. When he got it, I knowed exactly what I had. I mean, one of them heavy-duty things, dude. It had springs on the front. About like, about, like the, about like a little tricycle. I got Quaid here, I mean Clay here the other day. And uh, Clay just loves Paw because 
Papa got him a good little old tricycle the other day. And uh, Papa made sure he got that pretty little tricycle. And uh, I'm doing this for recording purposes. I'll play this back to him later to remind him that Papa's the one that got him that little tricycle. And I uh, had the pretty chrome all up. Man, it's pretty. It looked a lot like that old swim bicycle I had, except mine's yellow and his red. <coughs> looks good. I mean, it looks good, pretty. But you know, that surprise about the gift is just an element that we. It's one of them things you can hate and love at the same time. You know, you sort of you sort of like that surprising moment, but then again, you really like go ahead and see what's there. Well, you know, God is a little different than some of us. He gave us a gift many years ago, but instead of waiting at one point to open it up, He went ahead and told us what it was. He gave us a prophecy there in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We, we usually read this at Christmas. Let's not fail this year. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And the increase of his government shall, and peace shall, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, and to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So in Isaiah's day, 400 plus years before Christ came, we had a prophecy. We had a prelude to what's in the box. We was able to see what was in that gift. So we already know a little bit about that gift. One thing we know about that gift is we know that there's, there's a person there. We know this person's the, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> we know this, this person, this gift, because here in Romans 6.23, it just says that the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Savior. But in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave, that tells us what he gave. That tells us what the gift is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we already know what was going to be in the box. We already know what the gift was going to be. We know it was going to be the person which is the Almighty as Isaiah chapter 6 tells us. We know that he's our advocate. He's the Alpha, the Omega. We know that he's our bread of life. We know that he's our brother. We know that he's the bride and the morning star. We know that he is the Christ child. We know that he is the captain of our salvation. He is our chief shepherd. We know that he was the child that was born in the manger. We know that he's the divine one, the day star. We know that he's the door unto heaven. We know that he's the eternal everlasting father. We know that, that gift is our friend and a faithful witness. We know that he is our God. He's our high priest, which is holy and humble and the head of the church. We know a little bit about this gift that God has preluded for us. We know that he's Emmanuel. We know that he is the I Am. We know that he's Jesus. We know that he's King of kings and Lord of lords. We know that he's the Lamb of God. We know that he's the light. We know that he is life. We know a little bit about the gift that God had for us. We know that he's the master and the Messiah. We know that he's the morning star. We know that he's the Nazarene. We know that he's the only begotten. We know that he's the physician and he's the potentate. We know that he's the prince of peace. We know that he, the person that's gift, is the redeemer, the resurrection, and the life. These things God has told us a fourth time to let us know exactly about this gift. He told us that he is our Savior. He's our shepherd. He's the Son of God. He's the true vine. He's the true God. He's even our teacher. He's that unspeakable gift. He is the way. He is all wisdom. He's the wonderful. And he is the word of life. See, God gave us a prelude to this gift. He told us that the gift that he had for us in the box is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He told us about this, this, this gift that he gave us. In that, in that person, we have promises. 
We know that that, that person that gives us promises, he gives us a promise of constant companionship. One to me, I'm thankful for salvation because of salvation, he is my companion. But I'm also thankful so much for his companionship. I'm thankful that I have a constant companion. He's a brother. That's, uh, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's one that's always there. He's one that's always faithful. He said, Hebrews thirteen five. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'll be with thee in all time. He's he's a constant companion. Thank God we got a constant companion. We've heard this week in the preaching about being alone, and so many people in the days that we're in. They've got into depression because of the isolation, uh, because of the ordered seclusion. We've got depression that's overtaken, folks. But I want to tell you, we've got a constant companion that folks need to enjoy in these days. Rather than turning to the news to hear more about COVID, you ought to turn to the Bible and hear more about Christ. Rather than listen to all this mess that's going on, we know COVID's here. It's been here since March, which we know it was here before that, but... They identified it to us in March. We know all about the COVID. It's not going to change until it dies plumb out and everybody's done been through their part of it. We know the, these things. Hey, in the times of depression, what we need is light. We need, we need to spend more time with God. We need more time in the Word of God. We need more time with the Son of God. We need more time with our wise counselor, the one that will help us. Amen. He give us promises of a constant companion. He give us promises of a comforting counselor. Y'all ever been called to the counselor's office? Now, way back when, since it was in the dusty days, we didn't have a counselor's office that I recall. I either went to the vice principal or the principal's office. Now, y'all might have got to go to the counselor's office, but I never had that privilege. Might be because I wasn't as good as I was supposed to be. You know, I know it's hard for you to believe. But I didn't get a call to a counselor that's going to give me comfort. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, by the time you get to the door and put your hand to that doorknob, sweat beads have done popped out everywhere, you're flushed in the face, your insides have started to doing this, you're really not sure what's going to happen in here. Because I lived in the day where they had that big old piece of wood in the office. And that baby bit good. You know what these kids need today? They need a Mr. Patterson and a Miss Clendenin. You remember them? You remember them? Oh, yeah, there's over to East Iredale. I'm telling you, one day, I don't know what we did, but they lined the whole class up. And we, every one of us, had to get in line and watch the one before us get lit up. Now, y'all think I'm, I'm lying about that. I'm telling you the honest truth. When Mr. Patterson hits you, your feet, your heels come up. You got a paddling. You hear me? They wasn't playing. It wasn't just something to go through the motions. And when his arm got tired, Miss Clinton had swung it. And she wasn't an average gal. She'd probably been a real good softball gal, you know. I mean, she swung that, she swung that thing like a baseball bat. <laughs> I'm talking about lined up the whole class. You wouldn't hear that today. They scared to do that. Because too many of them parents out there goes up there and runs their mouth and whines because Junior got his little old butt busted. Amen? Amen. That's the problem we've got today. Folks has got away from that. That's Bible training. Amen. I know what abuse is, and I'm not for it in any way. Do it right. Amen. Amen. Do it right. But we've got promise of a comforting counselor. I can't understand, folks, these days. God the Holy Ghost will come right back there where you're sitting, crawl up on your heart, and begin to work on you to draw you to him why? He ain't drawing for the whooping. I'm testifying today, I don't know of a time that God drawed me to him to beat me. The beatings I got is because I went away from him rather than coming to him. I, I, I know this is dangerous, but has anybody had any other workings like it? 
You ever, you ever, God ever draws you to him so that he can whoop you? No. See, God, God don't do that. God whoops you to get you to come to him. Now, I know this is, Steffi probably whooped me for this, but she's getting big enough now she thinks she can. But, you know, back in the day when you'd have to tear them up a little bit once in a while, this is the strangest thing. We discipline them, we prayed with them, and we let it be. And what would be strange, and I told Judy one time, it really dawned on me, after I'd go back and sit down, and of course, you know, my heart's broke because I really didn't want to have to whoop them to start with, but you got to. You got to train them up right, and you go back and sit down. You know, it wouldn't be just a little bit, here she come, crawl up on my lap, hug my neck. Do you know what that is? That is the perfection of discipline. Because that's what it's supposed to do. God issues discipline to bring us to Him. When we come to Him, He's that constant comforter. My soul, I can't understand, folks. God began to deal with them. And I've been there back in the day, and I don't understand why I've done it. I'm telling you, I don't understand. But rather than come to Him, sometimes I turn and go the other way. I'm telling you today, there's no reason to fear. If God Almighty is drawing you, it's to give you comfort. He's calling you to Himself that He can love on you, that He can help you, that He can nourish you, that He can heal you. He's a comforting counselor. That's part of the promises we get with this person. He cleansed us of all sins. We know that. He says if we'll, if we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse of all unrighteousness. All of it, not just a little bit. That's hard for us to understand because some of us has committed things that we just don't understand why God would forgive us. I mean, honest, one of the worst things I've done was walked away. I growed up hearing preaching. I heard nine months of preaching before I was ever born. Faithfully. And if you don't believe they hear, then you need to get your brain checked out. It ain't working properly. That baby in the womb does hear. I'd roll over there. Y'all think I'm just old mean guy. I'd roll over there and talk to my babies in the mother's womb. And they'd go to kicking and to carrying on. She'd have to tell me quit so they'd settle down. You tell me they ain't alive. That bunch of devils that wants to kill them. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't want to go over there. I'll get, I'll get, I'll get out of whack. But you know, I, what I like about God is he's cleansed us from all sin. He didn't just categorize them and say, I'll get this and then that and then leave this crowd over here. No, he said, I'll take all your sin and cleanse you of all sins. That's the promise that he gives us. We got a castle in heaven. We got continual life. He talks here about everlasting or eternal life. We've got continual life. I know the phrase and I understand it. When quit, people quit breathing over here, we say they die. And I know I'd never get it done before Jesus comes, but we ought to change that. Instead of saying, if they know Jesus, we shouldn't say they died. They graduated. They come out of training, and they got to go home. They didn't die. I, I, I don't want to play on your emotions, and I don't want, to, I don't want to, to hurt anybody in any way. I wouldn't want you to take it wrong. But our folks that's gone, that's saved, they ain't dead. My daddy is not dead. My mama's not dead. My grandma's not dead. Brother Harold's not dead. Your daddy ain't dead. Precious Miss Linda, she ain't dead. She's more alive now than she ever been, has been before. She has no pain, no suffering, no sorrow, no flesh problems. They don't die. They get eternal life. <coughs> ain't that a blessing? Ain't that just wonderful what God does? with this gift because see he, he promised us some things based on the person that we get in that gift 
continual life. Uh, can I mention one more of those? Not only is it a constant companion, a comforting counselor, it cleanses of all sin, a castle in heaven, continual life, we've got a commissary. You know what a commissary is, Brother Jack? Thought you would. Brother, uh, Billy, you know what a commissary is, don't you? Didn't y'all have them in the military? Commissaries? Commissary? Military folk know what a commissary is. You know what a commissary is? That's a place on base that supplies you with your needs. Right? You'd help me when you say amen there. That way everybody knows I'm telling the truth. <clears throat> commissary. We have a commissary. In this promise, because of this person that's in that gift. I've got a commissary. Philippians 4.19 but my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Now, do I need to call him up this morning and say, Now, listen, Lord, I've got a need. Can you uh, sort of check your bank account status and make sure you can take care of it? Can you check in your commissary and make sure that there's uh, sufficient supply? We don't make them kind of phone calls because we don't have to. We know that his commissary is always full for what our needs are. I'm talking about, listen to me now, I'm talking about we got a person in that gift that God has foretold us about and we've got promises that come from that person and we know that he's able to fulfill every jot and tittle. So I've got two things to ask you. This unwrapped gift. What if we un don't unwrap it? Very great gift. Told you about the person. Told you about the promises, but God gave it to me. What if I never unwrap it? What if I fail to open up this gift? He tells us here in Romans chapter 6 what we've got if we fail to do that. There's two things. I'm going to give them to you quickly and we'll go home. I've told you what's in there, what we can have if we open it up. But what about those that do not open the gift? Those folks that reject and refuse the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Those folks that God Almighty out of a heart of love has given His only begotten Son the person and the promises that He's got for us. He gave it all to, He's presented us the gift. What if we don't open it? What if we don't unwrap it? There's two things here. You look at verse number 17, it says, But God, be thanked that ye were. Now that word's there because that's what they were before they got the gift. So let's take that out. Forget the word because we're talking about those that fail to unwrap the gift. What's their condition? They're servants of the devil. Servants of sin. Servants of the devil. What's a servant? A servant is a person, male or female, that attends another for the purpose of performing menial offices for him to who is employed by another for such offices or, for, or other labor and is subject to his command. So when folks fail to unwrap the gift that God has given, when folks fail to open the box that God has given, and he's already told you what's there, for those that will not unwrap that gift, they will be forevermore the servant to the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You're going to be a servant of the devil unless you unwrap the gift. You're a servant of the devil. You're a servant of the devil unless you unwrap the gift. Lost people can't get that. They don't understand that. They don't see that. You can't do anything you want to. Because you're a servant. You're in the chains of sin. You're a servant to the devil. 
that don't seem like much, but it, it's got a lot that goes with it because there's a ending to what happens with the servant of the devil. That's point one. See how quick that went? I'm learning like Brother Jeremy. I'm learning. That's good, wasn't it? Point one's gone. Point two, the final point. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. So first, in verse 17, they're a servant of the devil. Second, in verse 23, they're sentenced to death. The opposite of life from the Lamb of God, our Lord and Savior, the opposite of that is servants to the devil and the sentence of death. You know what takes care of that sentence of death? The gift that God gave. If you're here in this building today, or you're watching with us through the World Wide Web, and you've never been born again, you are a servant to the devil based on God's word, and you have the sentence of death upon you. What person in their right mind would prefer to work for death over the gift of life? I can't understand it. I know that I'm on the safe side of the fence. I understand that. I got saved as a young fellow. I understand that I'm, I, I can't look at it the same way because I'm on this side now. But I cannot understand why anybody would want to take a chance of the sentence of death being executed on their life. And you have no idea when that sentence will take place. I've had court dates. Those court dates had exact time I was supposed to be there. When I got there, they went through the... the the tally of the day, they come back and tell you about what time things is going to be if everything goes right. I had somewhat of an appointed time to when I would face the judgment for my wrong way. We don't know what that is. Hebrews 9, 27, it's once to point it unto man to die. And after this judgment, we don't know when that time is coming. See, that time can come. My baby brother... Well, actually, he was older than I. He was, he was a year older than I was. He was born September or August the 21st and died September the 17th or vice versa with those numbers. So he lived right at a month, give or take. You would not think that a, a, a precious baby, born healthy, he's a little preemie, but he's born healthy. You wouldn't think that a, a healthy baby boy that was born three or four weeks ago, would die. But God's appointment was for him to pass on. We don't understand all that goes in that. But Stephen Allen White didn't live more than three to four weeks. So that's a baby. My Uncle Carl was just now from being 100 years old. Didn't know that his day was coming until it got to the end. He lived to be almost 100 years old. So from a few weeks old to 100 years old, nobody knows when your time's going to come. God in heaven has given his only begotten son the gift of God to you. As I opened, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. God has a gift. You already know. I've already told you what's inside the gift. You already know that. You know that you've got the person in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that you've got the promises of God. I've just given you two simple points on what you get if you fail to unwrap the gift. servant of the devil and the sentence of death how do you fail to open the gift knowing that it's the gift of life it's a gift of love it's a gift of labor and it's a gift that lasts how do we fail to open those how do people fail to open how do people reject such a precious gift that God gives 
but people do that day in and day out. We've had folks sit in this very congregation that admitted there's lost and undone without God, yet walked out those doors having failed to open the gift that God gave. How is it with you today? You opened the gift? You opened the box? Have you unwrapped the gift that God gave? Have you received the precious power and love of the Lord Jesus Christ? Failure to do so, you'll continue to be a servant of the devil and you'll have the sentence of death. You are the one that makes the choice to either open the gift, to unwrap the gift, or to leave it unwrapped. God said, whosoever will. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the presence of God and the power of God. Thank you for your promises that you've given us. I ask you this morning, Father, take these dear thoughts, work in the hearts of those that are lost and undone. God, listen, I, I don't want to try to be the one to compel them. I want it to be the working power of the Holy Ghost of God to work in the hearts of sinners and help them to know that it's as simple as receiving the gift. You said that whosoever receiveth the gift of God becomes the sons of God there in John 1, 12. To those that receive you, to them you gave power to become the sons of God. I pray that this morning, Lord, that you'd work in their hearts of those that's lost. Help them, Lord, by faith repent of their sins, and receive the gift of Jesus Christ to them. I pray, Father, for those, those of us that have received, for those of us who ha that have opened the box, help us to realize what a precious gift you gave us. And I say thank you for it. Thank you so much for giving me a precious gift, though I was so unworthy. Thank you, Father. Now have thy way in Jesus' name. Amen. The altar's open. You mind God, will you? You're tuned in by the web. Beside your chair, beside your couch, wherever you can get. God's dealt with your heart about receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. Would you just bow your unworthy head? Ask Him to save you. And you mean in business from the heart. He said that here in this passage. With the heart, you believe in righteousness. You'll believe Jesus died for you on Calvary and believe yourself a sinner. You believe that God will save you and ask Him. He'll do just that. All you got to do is say, God, be merciful, me a sinner. Come into my heart today. Save me. He'll do that if you'll just ask him. There's evidences of the gift. I'll not get into that today. There's evidences that you've had the gift. You've received the gift. Do you have those evidences in your life? Does it show that you've been born again by the Lord Jesus Christ? Ask him to save you. Believe him. He'll do it. The Bible says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You'll believe. God will born you into his family. You mind the Lord. 